The crash of Flight 409 in the Snowy Range and Medicine Bow Peak is one of Carbon County's most tragic disasters. It is also a study of how airline crashes were handled in a world without major satellite coverage, GPS radar, and black box technology. It all started in New York as the United Airlines Douglas DC-4 took off from New York City. The Douglas DC-4 was one of the most popular airliners used in the 1950s, by major airline companies such as United, American Airlines, and TWA. The flight's planned final destination was bound for San Francisco, but was scheduled to make stops in Denver and Salt Lake City. When the DC-4 touched down at Stapleton Airfield in Denver at 5.51 a.m. on October 5, 1955, it had already been delayed by weather. The flight crew was cycled out at this point. Captain Clinton C. Cook, First Officer Ralph Salisbury, and Stewardess Patricia Shuttleworth took command of the aircraft. Captain Cook had 9,807 hours of flight experience, while First Officer Ray Salisbury had 2,418. Cook was an experienced captain who had flown the route from Denver to Salt Lake 45 times. Salisbury was a rising star for United and was poised to become a captain very soon. In addition to rotating flight crews, the plane was refueled and was carrying 1,000 gallons at the time of takeoff. At 6.33 a.m., Captain Cook contacted dispatch informing, him, informing them of the plane's takeoff. This would be the last communication anyone would have with Flight 409. By 8.11 a.m., the plane failed to appear on radar outside of Rock Springs, Wyoming. At this time, it was considered odd because they would have definitely appeared by this point. By 10 a.m., the plane was declared missing. Due to a lack of radar coverage, over the area, it was believed the plane was lost. There was no way to know exactly at what time the plane was lost. From Cheyenne, T-33s and F-80s were scrambled to begin an air search of the surrounding area. From the ground, the Wyoming National Guard began searching in the Medicine Bow area and the Snowy Mountain Range. The Carbon County Sheriffs were dispatched as well as Albany County authorities. After a short debate over jurisdiction, it was determined the flight came down in Carbon County at the base of Medicine Bow Peak, which soars to 12,000 feet. The crash site was extensive. The point of impact was determined by a massive black mark on the rock face just below the peak. The first piece of debris found was a chunk of landing gear discovered 1,500 feet away. And sadly, the first victim was found 500 feet from the initial impact zone. Due to the terrain of this location, experienced rock climbers had to be utilized to recover bodies from the scene. The largest piece of the aircraft was discovered was lodged in a ledge above a vertical cliff. After the first day, only four bodies were found. Additionally, due to the high altitude conditions and rocky terrain, recovery of debris and remains remained hampered. Many pieces of debris were dislodged and rolled down the hill. Local pack animals were also used to help transport debris and victims from the scene. The recovery efforts ended on October 11th, 1955. Even though there is no black box or radar data, the event is believed to happen in this manner. This is all theoretical, of course. When the plane left Denver, it deviated from its planned flight path and flew over the Medicine Bow National Forest. A witness said they saw the plane flying northwest around 7 a.m. They noted the plane was very large, but flying low. Another witness claimed that shortly after seeing the low-flying aircraft, he had heard a large distant explosion, but wrote it off as being a mining accident and did not associate it with the plane. Based on forensic evidence of the damage, the plane was intact upon impact. The nose hit the face of the mountain while trying to gain altitude. The front windows were shattered, but the frame remained. It was believed that the pilots had come across the mountainside too quick and realized it was too late and tried to pull up at the last minute. Due to a lack of communication, there is no way to know if there was an internal issue in the plane or if it was damaged pre-crash. In 1956, a re-examination of the crash site took place to, to nail down a specific cause. Another theory put forth was that maybe there was a problem on the plane that caused the flight crew to become incapacitated. The cockpit combustion heater was thought to be the culprit, as a failure of this device could bring carbon monoxide into the cockpit. The piece was found, but the damage to the piece was too extensive to make a definitive call on a cause. The final 
decision was to say the cause of the crash was unknown, but the two remaining theories remained. The incapacitating carbon monoxide leak in the cockpit, or a deliberate deviation from the flight course which caused the plane to fly into the mountains with the pilots not being able to see the incoming peak. The most damning evidence for pilot error is the fact that the forensic evidence showed the plane attempted to pull up just before striking the mountainside, which could have been obscured by weather conditions. This thought trumps the idea that they were incapacitated by carbon monoxide. The flight deviation from Laramie could have also caused the issue. It is unknown why the pilots decided to deviate from this issue, but the usual plan from Denver to Salt Lake was to fly north to Laramie and then make a 90 degree turn at Laramie flying all the way to Salt Lake City across the southern border of Wyoming. Flying into these difficult mountain conditions would have been difficult for any pilot. Whichever theory is correct, we will unlikely never know what the exact cause of the crash was. Sadly, all 66 souls on board were lost. This included the three-person flight crew, as well as 63 passengers. In one of the more bizarre coincidences, there were three other major crashes in 1955 that involved 66 fatalities. In March 1955, a military plane crashed in Hawaii. In August of that year, two U.S. Air Force C-119Gs collided over Germany, killing 66 as well. Flight 409 was the highest civilian fatality crash until shortly later, on June 30th, 1956, when two planes collided over the Grand Canyon, taking the lives of 128 souls. Even today, as you hike the terrain around the crash site, pieces of the plane are still being found. It remains one of the tragic and most major disasters that took place here in Carbon County.